I'm building a new gun. It was inspired by a picture of an early Muscatoon from the 1500s. And uh, I've got this barrel. I've been wanting to get one of these. Muzzleloader Builder Supply came out with these barrels, 15 and a half inch long, octagoned around, tapered and flared, swamp barrel, 62 caliber smoothbore. And I was thinking of building just a long barrel pistol, but then I got this picture of this Muscatoon, and I thought, yeah, I have to build that. So then I got, is this a thing of beauty or what? I'm not going to use a wheel lock, I'm going to use a snap haunts. I got this from uh, the rifle shop. They're the only ones that I know of that are making these. It's a new made lock, very high quality lock of an English style snap haunts. It's a flint lock, exactly the predecessor to the flint lock. It's got a very uh, strong spring. It's got a sliding pan cover. You put your priming in there and you close it. The English lock has a way that you can close the pan with the hammer down. When the hammer comes down, this rod slides the pan cover open as it's, they don't call this a frizz. This is a either a steel or a striker. And boy, it is, and it's got a lateral sear. It's a little different. I'll get into the workings of the lock, but boy, is this thing a great lock. <laughs> so anyway, this is going to be the heart of the whole thing. This in the barrel, and I went through a design process. I used something that fits me well. My blunderbuss. I use, I made it a little bit longer. I use, this is to get the basic architecture of the stock. Yeah, I made several patterns before I got down to my final one. I want to use the fishtail stock in the 15 and 1600s. But I've never held one before, so I had to make a tri stock out of three quarter inch lumber. Some one by stuff I had. And this will work just fine. It's going to have to be a little wider in here to take that big musket lock, but I think it'll work. And then I've got big piece of curly maple. Grade 4 curly maple. I, I didn't get presentation grade because that was out of my price range. <laughs> this piece of wood costs a hundred dollars, but I think it'll make a really nice stock. It's, it's pretty nice curly maple. Also from Muzzleloader Builder Supply, they have really good stuff. I've been getting all my parts from them, except for the Snop Hans lock. So now, the problem, I, I don't have my bandsaw anymore. I have it, but it's down in the storage shed in Spearfish, and I'm up in Elgin, North Dakota. Long story. But, uh, so I've got to start chopping this down, so I'm going to use the power saw where I can, but take chunks off and then the old method I've drawn my line and uh, the, what I'm, the finished line of the stock and I'm going to take everything down to within 1 16th of that finish line so what I'm going to do is make a series of slots spaced out down to within 1 8th of that line 1 8 the final line, so I'll leave a 16th inch to file off, and then I'll just have to, to use a chisel and file and planes 
and file it down to where I'm a sixteenth inch above my finish line all the way around. And uh, and I'll start like I do with starting letting the barrel. And then we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what comes out of this. But uh, yeah, I'm really inspired. I really want to build this gun. It'll be different than any other gun I've ever built. That's my project. I'll have to prepare the barrel for inletting into the stock. The first thing I'm going to do is install a white lightning touch hole liner. I like to use these. They're stainless steel and they're coned on the inside. So they allow the powder to be right up close to the hole and they're extremely fast firing. So what I'm going to do is I've got it marked here I stuck a dowel down the end and to hit the breech plug and the breech plug is a half inch from the back of the barrel to the face of the breech plug and I want this slightly ahead of that. So this is a quarter inch. It's a quarter inch by 32 threads per inch. I have a special tap for it. So I added an eighth of an inch from there plus a 32nd. So I'm first I'm going to use a center drill. I've got a center punch. I'm going to go in with a center drill. Then I'm going to drill with a special drill sized for that special tap. And then this 82 degree countersink will put a slight countersink on there because this has a an angle right here, 82 degrees, and I want that to bear on there to seal. And then I'm going to go down through there with this tap, quarter inch by 32, and put that in there. And I'm going to set it. I'm going to set it up in the drill press vise. I'm going to use this because this is tapered slightly. So I'll block it up until this is at right angles to the drill because I want to go right angles to this flat. I'm going to do that out on the drill press, and I'll pull the breech plug out because I'm going to clean up where it sticks through the inside. I'm going to clean up even with the barrel because I don't want the cleaning patch catching on that. And then I have to also file angles on this breech plug to prepare it for inletting into the stock. So a register mark there. There's a number one. That's what lines up the breech plug. And I've got pieces of brass along the side so I don't damage it. I have the plug back in on a washer because I'm going to file an inletting draft on the breech plug here. I've come in a sixteenth inch on a side and I'm going to file an angle here and here out to this edge. So when it goes down into the stock, the mortise it goes into is wedge shaped so it'll get tight at the top. You know, I've got my touch hole liner in there now. I run it in uh, with the vice grips with a little JB weld on it. So I don't want any gas leakage around it and it won't be coming out of there. I'm going to draw file all these barrel flats to take all the machining marks out. There's the part I have to grind out, and I'll be using this little ball end cutter. I'm not going to film it because it sounds terrible, and you won't be able to see it anyway. Give a shot of it after I get it finished. Just want to take it right out, even with the bore there. 
Getting ready to put the breech plug back in. Got everything all cleaned off and degreased, and I always like to use a little anti-seize on it. Uh, we really don't want to have to pull them, but sometimes you have to. You get a really stuck load that you have to push out. I have had to pull them, so a little anti-seize will help it come out if we ever do have to pull it. Blunderbuss lock is a musket lock and I always thought it was pretty big and it uh, is but the snap haunts it's a musket lock also it's a monster so I could the distance between the pan and the sear is different on these locks and everything has to revolve around the trigger from this stock I know I want my trigger right there and the trigger will be pivoted high and it'll pull back on this sear to release it. So a sear needs to be somewhere back of there, not too far back so it gets into here. And then where the pan lines up, that's where I want the touch hole. So I couldn't use this barrel placement from this stock on this. so. I put the barrel back of the barrel here and I've got it marked here and I've got it marked a sixteenth ahead. There's an extra sixteenth up here and an extra eighth of an inch all the way around the rest of the stock. And that's because as you're inletting things down into the stock, the upper edges tend to get kind of chewed up and raggedy. So this way I've got an eighth of an inch to take down to the center of the barrel when it's fully inletted. So the breech will have to be down to this line and the, the front will have to be down to that line. And then I'll take this upper eighth inch off, should get me down into a, a good inlet. I've got my inletting draft filed in here now. This area is a little over a quarter inch wide, tapering all the way up. So the first thing I'm going to do here is cut I'll start with the, the tag there and I'm going to start cutting an area one quarter inch wide and three eighths inch back from this edge on my center line working from a center line from now on. I'm just going to keep doing that for a while until the barrel starts laying on this area here. And basically, I'm just going to keep going down with whatever part of the barrel hits the wood when it cut away until the tang is lower than this area by one sixteenth of an inch. Now it's about using the Inletting black, the black stuff. It's messy, but it sure tells you where the high spots are. Back all the way through. Pretty much from here on out, it'll be taking away the black marks until she settles down in there.
After one day of barrel and wetting, this is where I'm at. Barrel's gone down into the stock about one eighth of an inch. And I'm about halfway there. Almost down to the tang here. And it's getting there. The barrel channel is finished now. Tang is a sixteenth inch below the surface here. And the heights here are an eighth inch above the center line of the barrel. This will be taken down to the center line of the barrel. Now I'm going to take I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to take this down to within a sixteenth of that center line. And the last sixteenth will be taken down when I round the stock and shape everything. The important thing in this breech area is that this part of the plug and the back of the barrel I want to be hitting the, these areas and this area at the same time to absorb the recoil. I tend to use heavy charges sometimes and uh, so I want to make sure all these areas are hitting at the same time. That's why all this black is here. But this back here, I don't. This has to have a little clearance because I want these to absorb the recoil, not this because it could split off a piece of the stock. So I've got just a little bit of clearance back there. But these areas, there's, there's no clearance here. I'm going to draw some lines on the stock here. This line is the mid midpoint of the barrel. Touch hole will fall on this line. This is a line that marks the bottom of the barrel. This is a one quarter inch web below the barrel where my pins will go. My barrel lugs are a quarter inch. So I've got a quarter inch web here and the barrel will be pinned through this web. And then this is going to be the ramrod, 3 8 ramrod. Now I might have to taper it on this end to clear the front lock bolt, but these lines are important because I've got to know where my forward lock bolt's going to go. I'm hoping to put it down below the ramrod. I'd like to run a full 3 8 ramrod. The lock is next now that I've got the final location of my touch hole. I've got all everything stripped off of it. It was either screws or these little tapered pins. It actually worked pretty good and I just pounded them out. Now positioning the lock it all centers around the pan that centers around the touch hole so I have to line that up so the touch hole is kind of in the center of the pan not on the bottom but kind of in the center 
and then I got to position the top of the plate close I can get it to this line here that's half up the barrel. I can make adjustments. What's good here is I'd be able to put my forward lock bolt below the ramrod. Get that where I want it. Center this up where that looks pretty good. Fairly even down here. The right distance to the touch hole. And then I've got a, an area that I can cut out of this upper part of the stock to clear the bolster, which is the part that sets up against the barrel. So now I've marked that. And I'm going to mark the where this lock falls. And everything's lined up with that touch hole like I want it. That'll get me started, then I'll just uh, notch it out till she sits flat on the stock and start cutting out the inlet for the lock. I've got her sitting flat on the stock here. I had to do some cutout for the bolster and for the places where the sear and the sear spring mount. And I've got room here for my forward bolt to go below the ramrod, lined up with the pan so. Now I just got to go down into the stock with it until the bolster hits the barrel. But what I'm going to do first here, I'm, I, I cut that little dingleberry off the back here, just this little glob, then all I did was make the lock, lock longer, and it's long enough. I looked at a lot of pictures of old locks, and they were shaped kind of, kind of come kind of to a swooping point here. And it'll help when I make the lock panel and I can curve this area, grip area here, much more than if that thing was was a three eighths of an inch, almost a half inch back. And it's also that's where your hand will go, so I can round this off down to the lock panel. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to filing an inletting draft. It's called just I'm just angling it back towards the stock about not even ten degrees on all these surfaces here for about halfway through and then I'm going to do a 45 degree bevel about a sixteenth of an inch wide around the outside edge and the lock will set into the wood halfway and the bevel part will stick above the surface of the wood so as soon as I get that done I can outline the lock with my knife and then I look at some of the internals because I could hog out a lot of stuff in the middle here and just kind of have just a ridge of wood around the outside that the plate sets against and the, bar and the panel set against the barrel. And that has to be a really good fit because you don't want powder going down in between the pan and the barrel because you could blow the lock off of here so that has to fit pretty snug. I clamp the lock in place and trace around it with my knife I went about oh, 3 sixteenths inside the edges and I marked back here at the, the end of the main spring. This will be solid because a mounting bolt will go through here, a mounting bolt will go through here, and one in the middle somewhere here. But all this area where the workings is going to go, I want to hog that out. So I drilled down 3 eighths of an inch. I got a, a quarter inch to go into the barrel with the plate. So I just this is just so I don't have to do so much inletting on this wood here and it'll get hogged out later to fit all the parts on the lock so it's I went down not not too terrible deep and I'm leaving plenty of a ledge along the outside for the lock to bear so I'm going to hog all this center here out down to three eighths and then I'll be cutting on these pieces shaving these down that lock settles down against the barrel.
Okay, the lock plate's getting set down in there. It's almost to the depth of itself, but that so I've got another problem I gotta start watching for here. Because this barrel is tapered, I'm getting closer back here than I am up here. Because the barrel does taper, so the front has to go deeper. So this has to be parallel as I work it down towards, I've got about a little over an eighth of an inch to go down, but I see I got a little more space up here than back here. So I got to gradually start going down more with the front. So I'll start shaving off the black marks in the front for a while, and then I'll go back to taking it down all over so that it stays even. But uh, yeah, that's just one of the things when you're inlitting a lock onto a tapered barrel, you have to go down more with the front. Taking little bits off with my scraper here. Taking the black marks off. I'm almost there. Gotten it done. I've been going from taking off in different places to get this the front end down lower. Now I'm about there. I got it too low and I had the gap here and then I had to lower the back down. So now it's pretty even. So I'm just gonna be taking the bare minimum shavings only where the black areas show and I'm going to get it down until my 12 thousandths. I'm not going to take it all the way down yet. I'll take it down to where my 12 thousandths, about 10 thousandths gap. My 12 thousandths feeler won't go in either, either end of the pan. And then uh, I'll take the rest of it down after I get this all cut for the workings. And I get uh, there'll be three lock screws, one back here, one here, and one in the middle somewhere. It'll have to clear all of the workings. And I'm almost there, so just a few more scrapings, I'll be down there. And then I can cut all this away for the lock workings. What I'll do is I'll put each piece on. Use the black stuff and cut it out. I'll start out with the main spring and the tumbler and just take off the black and then uh, put each part in and inlet each part separately. So I can see I'm getting down, getting down back here. I start cutting out there for these uh, areas where the sears mount. I'm starting out with the hammer. What I did here, I used a drill that would fit through the hole here and I just turned it by hand because I don't want to enlarge this hole in there just to mark a center point. And then I went in with the, a larger drill that would clear the hammer shaft. I use the black stuff to take any place it would hit. I had to take the stock down here a little bit to clear the hammer. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is put the tumbler on. The tumbler is held in place by a tapered pin. There's a lot of these used in this lock. They only go in one way. It doesn't take much to hold them in. When I take them out, I just I use a little drift. I just a tap on it in this direction, take it out. So then I'll use the, the black stuff and I'll just start taking wood away wherever it leaves a mark until this clears and then I can put the mainspring on and then I'll start cutting away for the mainspring and each part 
Once I get these parts all clear, I'll put each part on the lock. And then go through that same procedure until the lock goes on with all the parts in it. And gradually I'll start seeing more places to dig out. I'll get a general area that'll clear everything when this thing is turning. I know I'll have to take a lot of stuff more out here. But I'm getting black marks and cutting them away will inlet the workings. That will work. Okay, next I'm going to put the mainspring on. I'm also going to put this little push rod. It goes up here and slides open the pan cover. And I put my taper pin back in. Okay, now you always, always, always use a main spring vise. Compress the spring, otherwise you're going to break a lock or a spring. So I'm going to Compress this just enough to slip on there. Okay. Now I can use the black stuff and uh, get this so it'll go in there. I'm going to have to take a lot of wood out. Okay, so I have a big cavity cut out here now. Clear the mainspring in its down position. And I have to, I can't hold the hammer back <laughs> against that spring to inlet it in the cocked position because it's, I'm going to have to take more wood out of here, I'm sure, out of here and out of here. So I'm going to put the sears in and uh, inlet for the sears so they'll hold it full cock and not until I can finish cutting for the mainspray. And what I did here, I, had, I took a little too much wood out up here. So I just added a piece of maple. I just glued a piece of maple in just to cause a little bearing, more bearing area here uh, for the lock plate. I might add some pieces into here after I get uh, everything clearing. Now to install the sears. And I put a drop of oil on each one of these tapered pins and a little oil on the sear. And these pins, uh, they'll only fit in their own hole, so you can't really mix them up. So this is the primary sear that goes over here. And its pin goes in here. I'm not putting them in real tight at this point. This is the secondary sear. Goes in here. Maybe I need to put this one in first. Okay. Okay, secondary sear goes in first. Just learning this lock, it's the first snap on, so I'm done.
And there's the springs. This spring goes over the top there. And this one goes underneath there. And let's all put a drop of oil in all my screw holes. See, I'm not putting this together real tight at this point. And I can compress these by hand to make that go in easier. Now this has to go through because that's being loaded for too. This is the safety spring. There is a safety that blocks the sear from being tripped. The hammer cock. This goes on the outside. And it's a little pin goes in here. This spring is strong to the point of being dangerous. You could hurt yourself with this lock. <clears throat> okay. Now I know exactly where I have to take the wood out. And there's an area right in here that I believe is where the center lock bolts going to go. So I'll probably glue a piece of wood in the stock to bear against this area in my cavity there. But now I'll at least be able to inlet for, for these sears. And finish the inlet for the mainspur. The black stuff there, pretty much see where it's got to go. Right in kind of the front area of this cutout here is cut out for the place where it mounts. So I'm going to go down through there. inch and a half from the plate mounting surface and I'll go down with about a 3 8 drill down to an inch and a half below this surface here I got my drill marked at an inch and a half so I don't go too deep you now I can get it down much closer now my stuff is starting to hit so I can start using my black stuff and uh, it's going to be a pretty good sized cavity cut out there to hold all that sear mechanism. And there has to be room for, uh, for everything to work freely because if it doesn't fully engage it could snap out. I got everything clearing with the hammer down. Things going to change when the hammer uh, is cocked. Any touching on here will release this and the hammer will come down. So I'm going to put this safety on there. <laughs> it's not really a hair trigger but it's it's almost a hair trigger. So I'm just going to put this this is the safety, the extra safety. I'm going to put this on and what this does, it has a little point here that comes up in the slot and, and blocks the sear so you can't trip the sear. So it's a really good safety. So I'm going to put that little guy on before I start doing it in the cocked position. Okay, I'm going to cock the hammer now. I have my safety on here. 
and show how these sears work this is the primary sear that comes through the plate it has this angle on it and it fits into the angle recess there and when this goes in it's caught behind here so it's when this is tripped this will spring out and the hammer will drop so Okay, now it's it's fully engaged. This will show up. So any force pushing this back will disengage it. So when I put the safety on, it's got a little... This point here blocks the sear so it, it can't trip. So now this is going to have to be dug a lot deeper there, so and also the the mainspring is now coming up into this area, so this is going to have to be cut away. So now it's back to the black stuff, so that it'll fit in there with the hammer cock. Yeah, a couple, couple little places it's buried. Cause that's come back a little far to, to let it snap in. So a little more out here, a little there, a little there. But uh, she's almost there. And I'll sharpen up my scrapers and give it a good scraping, clean it all up in here. The last piece of the puzzle is the sliding pan cover so I have to take the mainspring off for that because its retaining screw goes in this little cutout place of the mainspring and it goes underneath this so which is a little spring in its own right spring goes up here in this forward hole the locks finally fully unleaded now I added some piece of wood back in I added a piece up here a little piece here and I'm trying to achieve several things uh, one thing is uh, the only place the center lock bolt can go through is going to be in in this area here and I wanted just more areas in the middle of the machinery for the lock plate to bear on so now I have one here there's this one here of course and I have one here and one here and I have a channel here for my pan cover push rod to work through but mainly what I was wanting to achieve probably more importantly well the bearing areas are important because I want something for that center bolt to pull against not just empty space to warp the plate but what I was really wanted to get was 
this piece of wood underneath the pan between the barrel and the pan to keep powder from going down into that lock cavity. And so they make, I mentioned before, something you don't want to happen because if it does, you can get a buildup of powder in there and it can blow the plate off. And also this up here, this wood that protects the mechanism from any dirt or moisture or powder flash carbon from going down in between the barrel and the lock and uh, fouling the machinery in there. So putting that piece of wood in there achieved that. And now I've got my bearing surfaces. Eventually I'll take these panels down so that only a sixteenth inch of this plate, maybe even less than that, just plate this where I just where I've got this angle here will barely stick above the stock. And it will be tapered, but I want it parallel and flat now because I'm going to drill these holes in the drill press. And uh, I, I want them at, the, at 90 degrees to the gun, not the lock, because it'll be on an angle. So that's what I'll do. I'll, uh, uh, this one's going to be right up in this area. This one's going to be in this area, and then there'll be one somewhere in the middle here that I'm not sure of yet. And uh, what I'll do is center drill them here, and then go through the stock with the tap drill hole. They're 1032, and uh, to the other side, and then uh, I'll take the plate off, bore through with the body drill, and then tap from the back side to thread those holes lock screws. But anyway, at long last, the plate is fully inlet. You know, the lock's in. I have my true lock outline. I'm taking this wood down. I'm going to leave. Well, right now I'm going to add a sixteenth. And it, when it's finished, there'll be a quarter inch between this edge and the lock. But that'll cut that down to like an eighth inch when I round it over. So it'll be rounded. So right now I'm taking it down to within a sixteenth of the line and then I can fit my uh, trigger guard so I have to drill for my tang bolt I got my tang bolt I'll come down through there actually it'll go up I'll go up through the trigger guard and thread into the tank that's the way the old guns were it's moving right along So uh, center punch where I wanted the lock holding screws to go and then I put the lock in place and put it in because this these since these surfaces are tapered put this in the drill press well these surfaces are straight but they're going to be tapered and the lock is tapered so I put it in on this flat surface and drilled I spot drill and then drill through with a number 21 drill, tap drill for a 1032. You know, with the plate in place, and I drill through there with a body size drill to clear this tap. So then I'm just going through the holes and using the stock to line it up. I'm tapping these holes. I don't want a lot of oil getting in the stock, so I'm using very little oil. I can go on through. Well, that's where they're going to go. I'm going to set them. They stick about an eighth inch above. I'm going to set them down into the wood to, so they're just the domed heads stick up above the surface of the wood. You know, this first hole that I drilled for a center lock mounting bolt turned out to be not a good place. Now I figured I'd have to cut into the barrel a little bit to clear it but it's just I would have had to cut in too far and I didn't like it. So I moved it back to here. They had plenty of room between them, they had plenty of meat, so I re-drilled it there 
and it comes through the tang here. Now, I don't mind, I don't mind going in here into the tang, but I didn't want to cut up into here where the breech plug thread was, so I just didn't like it, so I moved it. I just made a, uh, it comes through here, so all I have to do is grind off just a little corner of my uh, pan there to clear it. And I glued in, I made a dowel of maple, lined up the grain and just glued it in and cut it away for the, the barrel. So I don't like weakening a barrel right where the breech plug threads are. There's my plug and now it comes through back here. Which I'm much happier with. So I'm plugging that first hole that I drilled in the plate and I've got is a soft nail here and I've just ground it down till it fits in there pretty tight. I put a barely a little bit of a chamfer on each side of the hole and I got this nail sticking through only about a 32nd of an inch. 